Hi, this is Step School. Today we will cover the last part of the Kalman filter course. After watching this video, you will clearly understand every detail of these Kalman filter equations. But first and foremost, let's revise the state space equations. And this equation, this, the state space equation, allows us to identify the state vector for any time instance, or in other words, if we know the input variables, we can predict the state vector for the far future. However, dealing with a physical, with a real physical systems is not as easy as dealing with these equations. Because in every iteration, our prediction of the state vector of the state variables will deteriorate. And to understand this a problem, uh, let's compute the, the covariance matrix of Xn. So here we have just a linear transformation and based on the equation that I showed you before in the, in the last video, we can compute the covariance matrix in the following way. So we have X, the covariance of X n minus one. So for the last uh, iteration and we have f transpose and here we have plus q meaning that we have some uncertainty coming from originated from the system itself so when we covered uh, one dimensional random variables we use it um, a variance to uh, quantify the uncertainty level the noise level but when we talk about multi-dimensional random variables we use covariance matrix to describe the uncertainty to quantify the noise level so what this equation means is that uh, that uh, that q the, the uncertainty will accumulate so after for example after thousand iteration our prediction will be unreliable with very high uncertainty and it is uh, quite logical uh, because we have different uh, uncertainty uh, sources that we can neither predict nor control. First, we have external forces. Uh, for example, if we talk about quadcopter, imagine that our quadcopter is in this uh, attitude. And if we apply the force at this point, for example, if we apply more voltage to the motor, the, the model will predict that the, the the quadcopter will rotate in this direction. However, if we have some wind, strong wind affecting this point, the, the quadcopter will end up rotating in opposite direction. So the model cannot uh, predict, cannot, uh, cannot predict these external forces. The second, we have the model's uncertainty. The model cannot fully describe, precisely describe this, the physical system. And finally, we have system noise. For example, again, if we talk about quadcopter, we have the motor that generates mechanical, uh, mechanical noise, and this noise will disturb the, the sensor's readings. So that's why using um, this uh, method, using just the model to, uh, to measure, to estimate the, the state vector is not uh, reliable because the covariance matrix is going to explode after many iterations so we will end up with really high uncertainty and the solution to this problem is to use the second uh, equation of the state space representation y n equals c x n to estimate uh, x uh, the state vector In mathematical terms, the Kalman filter is an optimal estimator of the state variables. The Kalman filter uses both the model and the measurements y to obtain x, x hat with min minimum noise. So we use this x hat hat symbol to denote the optimal value of the state vector. And the, in the, in, and the first step in the Kalman filter we call it prediction step, prediction phase. 
So we have the optimal value of x from the last iteration from n minus 1, and we use the, the model equations to predict uh, the state vector. Uh, also, we compute the covariance matrix, matrix, and in addition, we predict the output vector y. And also, we compute the covariance matrix of y, the predicted value of y. Uh, after the first phase, we end up with two sources of information. The first, we have the predicted values of, of y, of the output vector. At the same time, we use sensors to measure y output vector. So we have two sources of, of information and we have to merge them to obtain the optimal value of x of the state vector. And uh, to understand how we can do it, it's, it's a good idea to revise the one-dimensional common filter that I pre presented in the first video. Uh, in, the, in the first video, I um, in, introduced this idea is that if we have two, um, two measurements, y and y2, uh, the, and if the variances are equal, the, the optimal value of x would be the average of y1 and y2. If y1 has less noise, or in other words, less variance, the, the optimal value has to be closer to y1. Otherwise, uh, x hat would, would be closer to y2. And we use, it, uh, use this equation to conceptualize this idea. So here we have the weights, or this k gain, to obtain, obtain the optimal value of x. So here we have y1 plus k multiplied by the difference of, of, the, of the measurements of these uh, values. And when we work with a multivariate uh, random variables, we use exactly the same idea. So uh, instead of uh, variance, however, we use a covariance matrix. So we uh, compute k again, but instead of variances, again, as I said, we have covariance matrices. So we have the covariance matrix of predicted value divided by the sum of covariances. Then we compute optimal value of y. So we have predicted plus this k gain multiplied by the difference between the measured and predicted. And also we compute the covariance matrix of the optimal value of y. However, the Kalman filter has to compute the state vector, not output vector. So we have to use the mathematical tricks to obtain uh, the optimal uh, value of the state vector. So first, uh, we take this uh, gain equation and we uh, substitute uh, these expressions, uh, this expression to, to this uh, gain equation. So we have eventually this expression and we take this whole expression uh, with, without c and we denote it as kg. So a k will be equal to c multiplied by kg. And, and then we will work with this equation. So y uh, predicted is equal to this expression. So we just substitute it just over here. Uh, plus a k. So instead of k, we're going to substitute c kg. I think it's pretty obvious. And then, um, then we have this uh, cova covariance matrix. So covariance of y can be written as c uh, covariance of x uh, c transpose because we have just a linear, trans uh, linear transformation. Then uh, we know the covariance of of the of the predicted uh, value, which is equal to this expression. So we just substitute it just over here. And for k, again, we're going to write c, k, g. And also we have, again, predicted value, and we're going to substitute it just over here. So, uh, so for this equation, we're, we're using this equation. 
And then what we do, we just take this part and we cross out C because we have C in all these expressions. So what we end up is X and hat equals to X predicted plus KG and we take this difference. And when, and when we use this equation, we again can cross out C and C transpose because we have this C and C transpose in both ends of all these uh, components. So we end up with a uh, covariance of the uh, optimal value, uh, which is equal to covariance of the predicted minus kg C uh, multiplied by covariance of the predicted. So let's summarize what we covered so far. So first step in the common filter is we call it prediction. So we predict uh, the state vector. Also, we compute the covariance matrix of the prediction. Then we compute this gain kg. And using this kg, we're going to correct the, the state, the estimation of the, uh, uh, of the state vector. So uh, uh, in the end, we have this covariance matrix of the uh, optimal value. Then in the next iteration, we're going to use this equation uh, just over here. So it's uh, just an iterative process. So using this way, we can uh, keep um, the, the uncertainty level, the, the covariance matrix minimal, so it, it is not going to explode after many iterations. So this is the end of the Kalman filter. Next, we, we gonna use the Kalman filter for the attitude estimation problem. And you can find this uh, slide and other complementary materials and other tons of uh, materials on my Patreon page. And please don't forget to subscribe and press the like button. So see you in the next video.